Now we're going to go ahead and actually create the curve return. Now curve returns are found under the network strings pull down. Network strings will only connect to road strings. So we're going to go ahead and click on create edit curve return string. And we're going to left click somewhere in the vicinity of the north side of the intersection. There is no exact requirement for this, but somewhere within the following area. Just left click. As soon as we do that, the curb definition form will be displayed. Now, important thing to note is on the right hand side of this form, as we move our mouse around different cells and buttons that are available, there will be a hover graphic. And this is designed to help you understand what it is that you're currently trying to make an edit to. And we've also got some text underneath, which just helped give a little bit of description as to what it is we're looking to do as well. The curb name is provided to you by default. So if you do not provide any kind of name, the software will use a name which combines both of the roads, the main road, which in this case will be existing, and the side road, which will be road one. Now we're going to replace this, and at any point you can come back and use the rename string tool to rename it, but we're going to call it KR1. Underneath, we're simply reporting back to you which roads are involved with this particular intersection. Underneath that, we have the template for the curb return. Now, at the moment, we have one called Auto. Now, we haven't pre-created Auto. Auto will always be available whenever you create a curb return or a cul-de-sac. Auto means that it will connect the corresponding codes from the template of the main road to the template of the side road. Now, on this particular project, both templates that are being used are identical Okay, the only difference being that the template for existing road doesn't exist on the right, but all of the codes will match. So the software will connect all of the corresponding codes except for the batter code. So we're going to leave that as auto. We'll look at how we can change that later on so that if there are no corresponding codes, we are making sure that there is a template being drawn. The important thing to note, though, is that EB is existing on both templates, and we can see the blue line on there indicating that it is. Underneath we have batter slope. If we use auto, the software will not connect the batter. This is controlled separately and outside of the template. So the software wants to know what batter slope we should be applying. So at the moment we're going to pick one to one. To the right hand side, if you do not want a batter slope being drawn with auto, then we can omit it. The connection code is what code is connecting the two of these strings together and where the radius will be applied. Underneath, we have the geometry. So in this case, we'll be looking to create a single arc and underneath, you can see we've got a radius of 10, which is a default value. We have other options where you can create a compound arrangement. And we've got two of those and where you can create and use your own alignment, which is what we will be doing at the end of this particular module. For the time being, let's click on single arc and we're going to leave the radius as 10 and then click on create update alignment. Now in the drawing environment, you will have seen that the software has used the auto template and automatically connected up all of the codes that correspond. And you'll actually see the footpath there widening from its original one and a half meters to the two and a half meters that we looked at in the uh, template section of the design data form. Now, if you want to zoom, if, for example, you're zoomed out or you can't actually see your intersection at the moment, on the curb return form, which will remain open, you can click on the little zoom button. This is not a modeless form, so unfortunately, you're unable to go in and zoom within the drawing environment. You need to click on the little zoom icon and then use your mouse wheel to scroll in and out as you need and pan if you want. If you make a mistake with the radius, so for example, we put 10 here and we decide it needs to be 7.5, you can simply continue to make edits by typing in 7.5 and then clicking on Create Update Alignment. As a reminder from what we did in the String Types module, all Civil Site Design strings are drawn on top of an alignment. The same goes with Network Strings. Network Strings are drawn on top of an alignment. Civil 3D users will see a Civil 3D alignment. Civil Site Design users will see a Civil Site Design alignment. What we're now going to do is click on Close down the bottom right hand corner. 
what you'll notice is that the curb return tool is continuing. So if you wanted to create another curb return, we could continue to click and create more. Also, you can use the same function to edit. So all I'm going to do is left click back where we created the curb return. And we can now go in and change some of the values. You'll notice that we're unable to change the template or the batter slopes after we have created. You'll notice also renaming at the top. We're not able to rename. So we're going to review how you can make these changes later on. For the time being, we're going to click on close. And then to finish the command, we're going to press escape. Now for clarity, we turned off the contours of total model prior to starting this particular lesson. So we're going to turn them back on again. So rather than go to Surface Manager to turn on contours, we're going to use Toggle Display from the Roads tab. And where we have Total Model, we're going to click on the Contours button and turn them on and then click OK. So don't worry too much about what's going on on the south side of the intersection. The reason for that is because simply we haven't put in any curb returns, so all of the codes are currently overlapping. But on the north side, you'll see those contours have been drawn for us. Let's now have a quick look at Model Viewer to see the results of this design change.